Hello, everybody. My name is Alexander Kazina, aka Cozy Bear, and I would like to thank you for joining me once again uh, on the first ever episode of my Pokemon Leaf Green Critical Lock. This is the only Nuzlocke run on the internet where every time someone scores a crit, uh, I spin my patented prize wheel of criticality uh, and suffer the consequences. Uh, you can catch a show you're currently watching live on twitch.tv slash live every Monday and Thursday at 8 p.m. Uh, sorry, 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I gotta correct myself. 8 p.m. was the previous time. Now it's 8.30. Uh, and when you're done with that, you can catch up on all my previous broadcasts on YouTube, where they publish as VODs every Wednesday and Saturday. Without further ado, let's get right into this. Uh, there is <laughs> a lot to talk about on today's stream, uh, none the least of which is the fact that I have a beautiful new Twitch layout. You better believe it when I say that I spent a lot of time slaving over this. I specifically decided, you know what? Considering I've been streaming so much uh, Pokemon games as of late, it would be great to conceive a Twitch layout that kind of reflects uh, my pixelated Pokemon adventures. And so I took a bunch of these sprites uh, from Pokemon Emerald and reconfigured them to work within my stream layout. I decided to add my uh, Twitch chat uh, to my overall layout because I found that in the past, whenever I would be chatting with someone here on Twitch, uh, oftentimes I'd feel a little bit guilty about the fact that uh, ye viewers at home uh, couldn't see who I was chatting with and what they were saying. Uh, so that's a nice, new, neat little addition over there. Thank you, Stream Elements, for making that possible. Uh, without further ado, let's get on with this. Uh, as I said right at the top, this is a uh, what I am referring to as a Pokemon Critical Lock Challenge. Uh, it is a Nuzlocke Challenge where I can only capture the first Pokemon from every route I enter into, and I must release that Pokemon permanently uh, if it should accidentally faint in battle. Uh, however, there's an additional twist. Uh, every time somebody in battle will score a critical hit, uh, which can occur either when my opponents score a critical hit or when I score a critical hit, uh, I'm going to spin my prize wheel uh, of criticality. Yes, uh, the prize wheel of causality is no more. It's now the criticality wheel. Uh, and depending on where it lands, I'll have to perform all manner of punishments. Uh, I have changed it up a little bit from how the previous wheel looked. Uh, I still can perform five or ten push-ups. Uh, I can still do a shot of hot sauce and I can still uh, most definitely, definitely uh, draw a Pokemon because the latter proved particularly, particularly uh, fun to do on my past couple of streams. Lots of views over on YouTube Shorts for those clips. Um, however, in addition to that, I have some new stuff. Uh, I have... Uh, get benched, uh, which means that one of my Pokemon, uh, when the prize wheel should land on it from my party, uh, will be forcibly benched for 30 minutes thereafter. I have drop 10, which means that uh, I will have to drop 10 uh, items of my choosing from my bag permanently. Uh, we have go broke. Uh, which means that when uh, the prize wheel should land on that, I will have to completely spend up any and all money that is currently sitting around in my Poke Wallet in Pokemon Leaf Green. Uh, we have no center. Uh, that means that until I get another critical hit, uh, I will be unable to go and heal up my Pokemon at a Pokemon Center or by, you know, putting them in a Pokemon box, for example. Uh, and of course, we have Switch It Up, which means that uh, I will have to switch three consecutive Pokemon uh, in a row in the middle of a battle. I won't be able to attack. I'll basically just be giving my opponent three kind of free hits. Uh, and finally, we have Dealer's Choice, which I would imagine is pretty self-explanatory. That means that I get to choose what punishment I want to give myself because I am one hell of a masochist um, and a sadist uh, when it should land on that to keep things interesting. All right, let's, without further ado, get right into this. Um, as we can see, we have ye old Professor Olk, the original Pokemon professor, uh, ready to welcome us into the world of Pokemon. Now, here's the thing. I put out a poll uh, on my Twitter account, which you can find at twitter.com slash Alex uh, to ask what starter people wanted me to start the game as. Um, I personally was kind of hoping that people would vote for Charmander because that would make the run 
that much more difficult. Um, I was fearful that they would vote for Bulbasaur because Bulbasaur is a you know very popular starter, uh, and it's also the Pokemon that I used way back in the day, back when I played Pokemon Fire Red for the first time. Um, however, instead, the winner overall of the poll, uh, with 42.1% of the vote, uh, was Squirtle, which I have no qualms with. Again, it's neither uh, my first or last choice. It was very much my middle choice uh, for this particular uh, little Nuzlocke challenge that I have ahead of myself. Uh, so I think it's only fair that we start with him. Um, let's get right on with it. Welcome to the world of Pokemon. Right now, the text is pretty slow. I'm not, uh, unlike uh, with my Emerald run, where I was playing Emerald Cross, which is like a, a quality of life enhanced version uh, of that game. I'm not doing that with this one. I'm just playing uh, Vanilla Leaf Green. So unfortunately, I don't have the option of changing up my text speed right off the bat, but I'll, I'll be able to uh, deal with that very soon. Oh, I just realized looking at the confidence monitor that I did not swap out my prize wheel. Let me fix that real quick. <laughs> that would have been real bad if I exclusively was showing the view of my prize wheel for the rest of the stream. Jesus. That's why you got to make sure you're looking at OBS when you do these things, folks. You don't want to look away. You don't want to go scrolling the internet looking for all sorts of news on Japanese junk food, which I definitely used to do some points in the past. My name is Oak. People affectionately refer to me as the Pokemon Professor, which raises questions of, wait a minute, is this guy even technically a Pokemon Professor? Uh, this world uh, is inhabited far and wide by creatures called Pokemon. Uh, for some people, Pokemon are pets. Uh, others use them for battling. Uh, as for myself, I study Pokemon as a profession. And back he goes. Too bad he never decides to give away that Nidoran female as one of the starters. I would totally love that. I used um, a Nido Queen as one of my Pokemon in my Fire Red run from back in the day, and she was fantastic. But first, tell me a little bit about yourself. Now tell me, are you a boy or a girl? Uh, I am IRL a boy. However, I'm actually going to go with a girl on this one because I have never played through Fire Red or Leaf Green as a girl, so that's who we're going to be. Uh, let's begin with your name. What is it? Yeah, so unfortunately, if you can believe it, there actually are not enough spaces for us to type out Cozy Bear, so we're just going to be cozy, unfortunately. Wish I could change it. Thankfully, I'm pretty sure that once we get to the DS games, we don't need to worry about there being a seven character limit. All right, here we go. Your name is Cozy. Yes, it is. This is my grandson. He's been your rival since you were both babies, which is <laughs> really funny. I mean, I guess like w when he says babies, he means more like preschoolers, like the, the cute little Japanese kids that have like the yellow hats and the blue dresses. <sighs> what is his name now? I'm going to call this guy Cozy with a C. I think it's only appropriate. And actually, you know what? Cozy with a uh, a C and an S instead of a Z. Oh, you know what? I'm going to make it cozy with a, an S instead of a Z and with an I and an E at the end. Um, unfortunately, I can't swap out the O with anything, but I think that's probably good. All right, here we go. Or was it cozy? Yeah. Did I stutter when I said that his name was cozy, Professor Oak? No, I did not. No, he did not. That's right. I remember now his name is cozy. Cozy, your very own Pokemon legend is about to unfold. A world of dreams and adventures within Pokemon awaits. Let's go. <clears throat> First, we have ye old NES here. In case we want to look at... What was it? Wait a minute. Was there even an NES in the original version of Pokemon? I vaguely remember the TV showing... Um, what was that old movie that was based off the Stephen King novella? Maybe it's on the TV down here. Stand by me. A girl with her hair and pigtails is walking up a brick road. Oh, well, I guess they changed it to the Wizard of Oz here. Okay. I gotta say, this is a pretty... Compared to the opening of Emerald, where you uh, come in a moving truck, this is a pretty <laughs> kind of lo-fi opening. Your mom doesn't even greet you when you come downstairs. Right, all girls dream of traveling. It is said so on TV. Oh yes, Professor Oak, next door was looking for you. 
Uh, before we forget to do so, let's go ahead and let's uh, set the text speed to fast so we don't have to worry about that anymore. Now, sadly, because this is not Emerald Cross, uh, we can't run indoors, but we'll make do. We will definitely make do. I'm going to go ahead and speak to Daisy. Hi, Cozy. Wait, what exactly is this? Uh, it's a big map of the Kanto region. Oh, but I don't get one myself? Really? Okay. Now, why are you staring at that sign? Oh, thank you. Uh, and here we have it. The classic technology is amazing guy. Gotta love him. And of course, we're going to try and speak to Professor Oak, but he's not going to be around. Unfortunately, these professor-like people that are hanging out at the lab won't have much to say, so... Yeah. I, I really... I really love this game. I really love the original game that this is based off of, or rather, sets of games, but... Man, it can't be understated, again, how just low-fi of a opening to the Pokemon saga this was. You just start in your room and you go outside. It's very, like, old-school RPG. <sighs> Thanks once again to everybody, by the way, for tuning in to watch uh, this new Nuzlocke run unfold. Or rather, a Critical Lock run. No joke, like... I've known for a while now that I wanted this to be a crazy Nuzlocke run where every time someone would crit, I'd spin a wheel, but I literally came up with the term critical lock like moments before I went live. Uh, and I'm glad I did because it's a great term. Uh, I think it definitely gives my uh, this particular stream a bit of a, a fun edge to it uh, that not a lot of other uh, kind of streams, videos of this nature will have. Um, but, but... It's easy to forget because it is kind of a weird word. All right. Now, last time around, uh, I named all of my Pokemon off of Bionicle characters, and I had a lot of fun doing that. Um, in particular, I had a real level of fondness for uh, Gally and Liwa, the Swampert and Pelipper, respectively. However, I think this time around, we need a little bit of a change of pace. I'm going to go ahead uh, and I'm going to name every single Pokemon uh, in this uh, Pokemon Leaf Green Critical Lock run uh, after food items. Uh, and as much as I would like to call this guy Turtle Soup... Fuck, do I have to call this guy Turtle Soup now? That's too- that's actually too good of a name. Sorry, dude. But we are gonna call you Turtle Soup. I- I- I-, I when that name floated up to me- <laughs> Oh no, we're not gonna have- Oh, no, wait, we will have enough space. We, we won't have enough space if we want to add a... Um, like a space between turtle and soup, but... Et voila. Here we go. Oh. Not gonna have our battle just yet? Nope, here we go. All right, if we lose this battle, the Nuzlocke run is over immediately, and we're going to have to end the stream and start up another game. So I'm hoping that we don't end our run prematurely here. Give me just a quick second. I'm just going to grab some water real quick. Um, since my last stream, I actually implemented a uh, channel point reward uh, by the name of, wait for it, you're not going to believe it, it's called Hydrate. I know nobody has ever done a channel point reward like that in the past. You especially are not going to believe what it does. If you redeem Hydrate, you force me to hydrate and drink a little bit of water to keep my uh, water levels in my body in check. So definitely go ahead and redeem that if that's something that you want to do. Again, I know a totally uh, original thing that nobody has ever done before. Um, but hey, you gotta be an innovator sometimes. You gotta break ground. Ooh, this is not... I can already tell that this is not a very powerful Squirtle. Oh, 
Oh, no, that was a... Oh, shit, that was a crit! Oh, holy smokes. Ladies and gentlemen, we are super duper early into our run. We literally are our second move into the run, but we already got ourselves a crit, which means that it is time for us to spin uh, the prize wheel of criticality. Uh, let's bring the prize wheel view right in here. Where is it going to land? Five push-ups. Okay, that's good. I was a little bit concerned for a moment that it was going to land on something that we can't do yet, like not being able to visit a Pokemon Center or dropping 10 random items from our bag. But five push-ups we can most certainly do. Uh, let's go ahead. Let's bring that uh, camera view out. Uh, and let's bring our top-down push-up camera view in like such. All right. It's been a little while since I've done this, so I'm going to do my best to limber up. Uh, maximum effort. One. Two. Three, four, five. Oh, oh, man, that never gets tiring. All right, our first ever crit for this particular stream is done and out of the way. Hopefully, we won't get another crit within the same battle. Or you know what? Let's get another crit within the same battle. That's more exciting. All right, tackle time. But yeah, this bulb, I can already tell that this is a <laughs> a pretty uh, weak Squirtle in terms of his uh, offensive presence. He's probably, probably, give me just a second to move the push-up cam out of here. Probably, I'm going to say a little bit more special oriented than physically oriented, but I truthfully don't know. And there we go. Kind of looked like a, a critical hit from the far, but thankfully it was not that. Yay. Congratulations, Turtle Soup. And I got $80 for winning. It's interesting how many little kind of tutorializing stuff they added into this game, even compared to something like Pokemon Emerald, for example. Mm. Anything else to say, good old Oak? Nope. All right, well, let's head off on our adventure. Uh, I think it's a hot minute before we get our running shoes. So I guess we're going to have to head out into the tall grass. Now, you know... A lot of people tend to be very uh, absolutionist when it comes to Nuzlocke rules. They'll say that, well, if you encounter uh, a Pokemon within a route, uh, no matter where you are in the game, uh, you have to capture that Pokemon right then and there. And if you're not able to, well, tough luck. For the sake of making things a little bit more fair and interesting, I'm going to say that any Pokemon that we encounter on this route ahead of us uh, don't count uh, towards the uh, our Nuzlocke uh, allowance for this particular route. Uh, at the same time, though, I'm also not going to try to battle anyone. I'm going to try to deliberately avoid people. Hey, good old Rattata. I believe we can only get Rattata and Pidgey on this particular route. Hey, there we go. And this is why you talk to everybody within them Pokemon games. I keep holding down the B button on my controller to run, even though I don't have the running shoes yet. Does Sky have anything to give us? I guess not. Uh, here we go. Who's going to be number two? Oh, another Rattata. Goodbye. So, yeah, let's chat a little bit about the kind of origins of this particular run coming together. Um, 
as you know, I did my Pokemon uh, Emerald Cross Nuzlocke run uh, over the course of the past couple of weeks. I um, <clears throat> I spent a long time doing uh, cooking streams on this channel. Whoops, I didn't, I didn't realize that would bring me back there. I thought there was like a potential item for me to collect there, but I guess not. Um, I did a long time uh, doing cooking streams on my channel. Those were really fun, but they were really exhausting. And especially towards the end there, I just got to a point where it was like, I don't really know that like I want to kind of continue doing this all the time. I want to I, I want Twitch streaming for me to get back to doing stuff that I just genuinely enjoy that I would do even if I didn't, you know, have to stream it. Uh, and I'm like, you know what? <clears throat> I really love them Pokemon games, and it's been a while since I've like done a run of like Pokemon Emerald or Pokemon Leaf Green from scratch. Like it used to be that like I would just you know play through a Pokemon game, beat the Elite Four, and then start it over from scratch. And then um, it, it got to the point eventually where I was like, well, I actually really care about the Pokemon I'm cultivating in these games. I really care about beating the Battle Frontier and, you know, registering every Pokemon in my Pokedex. I I'm just exploring Petalburg uh, City right now and speaking with a ton of people to see if they have any items to offer me. Uh, and so I sort of stopped, you know, playing them over and over and over. Um, and eventually, uh, it got to the point where, you know, I wasn't replaying through these Pokemon games at all. Uh, I would only play through, like, you know, whatever new Pokemon game would be released. Earlier this year, I, I finally, finally at long last managed to complete uh, the uh, Battle Frontier within my copy of Pokemon Emerald. It was a fantastically triumphant moment that I will <laughs> forever be proud of. Um, however, uh, doing so kind of opened up the opportunity of, you know, now that I've managed to do that, I have kind of no qualms, no regrets going back and playing through Pokemon Emerald for the first time. And so when I was thinking, all right, what do I want my streaming career to be post Cozy's cooking, post cooking up a storm in my kitchen and spending all day Saturday and Sunday preparing for the stream? Um, it, you know, occurred to me pretty early on that like Pokemon would be a kind of real fun outlet. And it had been a little while since I had um, done a Pokemon Nuzlocke run. The, in fact, I'd only done one Nuzlocke run before. I decided to Nuzlocke run uh, my Pokemon uh, Alpha Sapphire copy because I previously had had Omega Ruby and Omega Ruby... Um, I ended up losing it on the, me the Metro, uh, sadly. Sorry to kind of pull the tragedy lever like that, but that's what happened. And so I figured uh, when I would when I got my uh, copy of Alpha Sapphire to make up for it that I would just sort of Nuzlocke run through the game now that I already knew what the game had in store for me. Um... And hold on a second. I want to think. Yeah, I have to. I, I think I have to deliver Oak's uh, parcel first before I can chat with the man on the road. Um, and so, yeah, uh, it occurred to me, you know, there was a great opportunity to have a fun little Nuzark run with Pokemon Emerald. Um, and, you know, uh, that particular streaming adventure was real fun, had a great time with it. Coming out of it, though, it, it kind of bummed me out that I would so suddenly get opportunities to spin my prize wheel of causality. Um, back during my, uh, you know, months as a cooking streamer, I set up the prize wheel so that every single time somebody would follow, subscribe, donate, or cheer on my channel, um, I would spin the prize wheel a set amount of times, depending on how much money they donated, whether they subscribed or followed, etc. And, you know, over the course of my uh, Emerald Cross run, I didn't get as many people kind of following or subscribing to my channel um, or really kind of like, you know, making these sort of like big gestures. I still had people, you know, coming in and chatting and being real nice, but people were not kind of like engaging in the stream in that way. Uh, and so I figured, you know what, you know what, I think it's about time uh, that I, oh, hold on a second, Cozy's coming back. Are we doing another uh, rival fight here? Oh no, this is the, the Pokédex uh, introduction part. Um, and so I figured, you know what? What if I make it so that uh, me spinning the prize wheel is something that I do myself, something that's influenced uh, by whatever it is that's going on on stream? And so I brainstormed it a whole lot, 
and it occurred to me, you know what would be really fun is if every single time a critical hit happened uh, within the game I was playing, uh, I spun the prize wheel. And if I changed up some of uh, these spots on the prize wheel so that depending on where they landed, uh, I'd be forced to <laughs> make my experience of playing whatever Pokemon game I would play next uh, a little bit more difficult. Um, obviously, it remains to be seen, seeing as how we're still at the beginning of this run, whether that will prove a uh, good idea or not. Maybe it will prove a little bit too much, uh, but right here and right now, I'm really excited about it. I had a lot of fun a crap ton of fun drawing Pokemon from memory uh, during the final few episodes of my Emerald Cross Nuzlocke run. Um, and so I'm just really kind of looking forward to uh, being able to do more of that stuff without uh, being uh, dependent on people following or subscribing to my channel for me to have the opportunity to do so. And so yeah, that's sort of the origin of this particular adventure that we are about to engage upon. Uh, I think my rival was saying that I should head over to uh, his sister's house so I can borrow a map from her. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do that. Yay, here we go. See, it's been a real long time since I played this game. I was really confused when I saw that thing on her desk. I was like, wait a minute, what the fuck is that? Um, and I, I had completely forgotten that, like, oh, that's the map, and once you obtain the map from her, um, you, that's, like, you, you, the map disappears from her desk, which is why I don't remember it at all. <clears throat> okay, now we just need to get our running shoes, and we will be good to go. Uh, but before that, however, uh, we have some Pokemon to catch, and we have quite a few balls to make the process of catching them that much easier. All right, here we go. We got a Pidgey or a Rattata, and if we don't catch either on this route, we'll have uh, ample opportunities to catch him later on, so... And lo and behold, it's a Rattata. I don't actually hate Rattata. It's not my uh, favorite of, like, the kind of generational rats uh, in the old Pokemon games. Well, fuck, it's a critical hit. I'm glad that Turtle Soup is not that powerful, because... <laughs> um, it would be um, pretty unfortunate if I killed my first Pokémon immediately on my first route. Um, while this fun little music is playing in the background, let's go ahead and let's bring in our prize camera uh, so that we can spin the prize wheel of criticality. No center. Okay. That's uh, a bit of a, a daunting proposition uh, this early on in my run. Uh, so, no center is obviously one of the new uh, little slots that I added to my prize wheel for the purpose of uh, my leaf green run. Uh, it means that until we get our next critical hit, uh, we can't heal up at a Pokemon Center. Uh, either by speaking to Nurse Choi or by using the PC box. Uh, we also, um, you know, keeping in with the spirit of this particular regulation, we can't go and heal up at our mother or any other person in the overworld that will, like, instantly heal our Pokémon in that manner. So, uh, I guess we're not going to be using Rattata all that much. At least not until we get our next crit. Uh, give a nickname to the captured Rattata. Uh, yes, we will. What are we going to call this guy? Oh, of course, we're going to call him Ratatouille. What else? Okay, it's not going to be a perfectly um, grammatically correct Ratatouille, but to be fair, they added way too many characters into the word Ratatouille to begin with, so... All right, now what do we want to do? Because I'm... Hmm. We need to make sure that we can get another crit in um, before... 
uh, we can properly heal ourselves. I guess what we can do to kind of start off with is we can go to the Pokemon Center uh, in what's its faces city uh, right up ahead of us. Grab a few more potions so that we have a mobile Pokemon Center in essence uh, at our disposal and at least have that until we crit next. I guess I can probably just train up a little bit on this route below us. Uh, nope. Wrong building. Man, the music in this game is great. Uh, I, I know I talked uh, many a time during my Emerald Cross run about how great the music was in that game, but the music in this game is also real good. All right, let's see. Oh, look at that. I have quite a lot of money. I, I You tend to forget that you start off with like 3,000 uh, Poke Dollars. Uh, let's see here. Uh, let's see. Uh, how much does a potion cost? It costs $300. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get five. So I don't want to spend it all in one place like that. Uh, before we go ahead and we train up a little bit so we can get our next crit and free ourselves from this uh, no Pokemon Center prison that we're currently in, let's just speak to the old man. Don't you worry, though. You are not going to be doing any of the battling. The, the old man will be doing the battling on your behalf. And he really goes through the menus real slow. Like, nuclearly slow. Hey, thank you. We're not going to really need it because we're already kind of a Pokemon expert. Here we go, some cool little foreshadowing. Fortunately, it will be quite some time before we're able to finally come back here and take on ye old Viridian Gym Leader. It is quite, like, it is quite daring that the first Pokemon Gym that you ever come across in any Pokemon game is automatically closed right at the start. Now, do I want to do I want to train a little bit on the route below here? Or maybe do I want to go ahead and try and see if I can catch myself a Mankey uh, just west of here? You know what? I'm going to go ahead. And I'm going to try and see if I can catch myself a Mankey. So fun fact about Mankey, and this actually segues quite well into what I wanted to talk about next. Um, back when I played Pokemon Fire Red for the very first time, I want to say I was in 8th grade, not 8th grade, 6th grade, younger than that even, I was very fortunate to catch myself a shiny Mankey on this route. Um, it was one of the first shiny Pokemon that I had ever caught in any Pokemon run. Well, fuck so much for shiny Mankey. Uh, let's go ahead and let's uh, use Yolt Taco. Uh, I'm gonna still try and catch this guy because, I mean, why not? Might as well have another rat at my disposal, huh? Come on, come on. Yes. There, there will be many more opportunities for us to get fighting type Pokemon, but <laughs> I guess not for a little while. Uh, I'm gonna call this guy Papaya. And yeah, as you can see, I'm not really respecting any kind of species clause. I um, I, I kind of mulled it over my head and I just, I found all the kind of species clause rules in Emerald really kind of bogged down that experience. Fuck. I forgot about this. Now, here's the thing. He only has two Pokemon at this point. He has Pidgey. 
and he has... Fuck, that is a high-level Pidgey. This is not good. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to heal him up a little bit. Okay, that's not... Like, look, here's the thing. That wasn't all the damage in the world that I was expecting it to be, but I think I'm going to have to rely very heavily on my potions. Okay, well, that was... Obviously, getting hit by a sand attack is not great, but... Oof, this is where I... I'm really in need of a critical hit here, to be honest. Hmm, do I want to consider swapping in someone else here? Maybe... You know what I'm going to do is I'm actually... I'm going to keep him out until he gets hurt enough. Oh, you know what? I'm going to do a Tail Whip, because Tail Whip, I don't believe, is... Is Tail Whip uh, kind of like a move that is affected by accuracy? Hold on. I might be mistaken on this. Okay, so it turns out it actually it is like a move that is affected by accuracy. But I'm going to do Tail Whip on the off chance that he tries to tackle me again. Or not. Jesus. I really, I really kind of threw myself into the fire like that. Jesus. Now, to be fair, I don't know that this is an entirely super well-designed little uh, sequence of the game, though. Like, immediately, potentially throwing yourself into another rival battle that off the bat, where your rival's Pokémon are, like, three levels higher than your Pokémon might potentially be. That's not great. That is not great at all. Okay. Uh, on the off chance that he might score a crit and accidentally kill me, I'm going to heal myself up. Ooh, there we go. Uh, but of course, I'm missing too. Come on. Okay, well that was, I mean, that did hit with a little bit more force than before. Fucking goddamn, well, critical hit time, which means that we have to spin the prize wheel of causality. I did not plan this out very well at all. If I die within the end of this boss battle, I am <laughs> such a fucking idiot. Jesus. Uh, let's swap in our prize camera. Uh, and let's spin the wheel. Five push-ups. Okay, let's go ahead and let's do it. thinking on my feet very much today. Guess that's what happens when you decide to barge into a freaking trainer battle uh, that you were not planning on doing this early on. <sighs> okay, well the good news uh, is that thanks to that critical hit, we are no longer uh, prevented from going to a Pokemon Center after this is over. Fuck. I am going to go ahead. I'm going to sacrifice Ratatouille. Because I need to get my accuracy back. Goodbye. <sighs> uh, give me a quick second. I need to set some sort of reminder to change back the camera views. I have such a crazy layout that it's super easy to get this stuff all mixed up. Fuck. Mm. OK, 
Come on, just crit for me. Fuck, crit for me, come on. Give me a crit. I die, I fucking need a crit here, I'm dying, man. I am really, like, threading the needle here, but I am really hoping that this <laughs> next uh, hit that he's going to try and do on me won't kill me. Fuck. Because I can't, I need to use my potions more sparingly at this point. Because I only have two left. Come on. Yes! Come on, come on! Yes! Fuck. Fuck, man. And now we're going to level up, which is much needed, because we're going to need that for Bulbasaur. I don't know if Bulbasaur knows any grass-type moves. Shit, if I learn Bubble right then and there, he might actually have a grass-type move. Ooh, this is not good. Uh, let's see, does Rattata have anything that we can use to help us? Tail Whip. Uh, hmm. It's unlikely that Radita is going to be that much faster than Bulbasaur at this stage. On the There is, I mean, the small kind of realm of possibility that I could send him out and he could just barely be faster. Maybe Bulbasaur will try to use Tackle and its own Tackle will miss Radita. Let's send out Radita. Ugh. <sighs> Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Papaya, you are a real trooper. Now, if Bulbasaur... If Bulbasaur could very, very please, pleasely use Tackle and miss this time, I would greatly appreciate it. Actually, it should use another move. It should use Tail Whip of its own, or Growl, or whatever it can use. Fuck. Alright, well. We softened him up. Let's hope that that's enough. Am I faster? Hmm. Oh shit, he only has four damage from that? Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, we had to sacrifice the first two Pokemon that we caught, which were both of Weasley ass Raditas, but believe it or not, we're actually gonna be able to get through this just barely. Okay, it seems like there's actually a speed tie. Uh, if he crits on this turn, I'll be brought down to two uh, hit points, so I should be okay. Okay. Do I wanna... If he doesn't, like... I need to make sure that I can get as many hits in here as I can. I... <laughs> I attacked him three times, he attacked me three times. That means that... I'm trying to do the kind of mental math here. If after I heal myself... After I heal myself all the way uh, to 24, he's going to attack me once. He's going to bring my HP down to 20. Then after that, I need to attack him four times. Uh, you know, not discounting the opportunity of me getting a crit. He needs to attack me. Uh, actually, if he's doing four damage, uh, five times. So I should be okay. But man, oh man, was this really close. And of course, there is the opportunity that the speed tie will favor me, so things could turn out... Ooh. I don't love that, but he was already a little bit weakened. Fuck! Fuck! Fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. Come on, come on, crit. I desperately need a crit right now. If I don't crit, I'm the, the adventure is literally over. I mean, I... All right, there's one of two things that can happen here. Uh, number one, I get a crit and Bulbasaur is dead. Number two, um, I speed tie on the second turn here uh, and I manage to dead Bulbasaur again. Neither of those two things happen. The run is over. Mother fucking son of a bitch. Fuck. And that was a critical hit itself. It's like, what the fuck? 
Is this, is, is the world, is the universe itself trying to tell me something? Is it trying to communicate to me that I should not be doing this? What is going on? Fuck. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead, uh, because that was a crit, and spin the prize wheel. See what it lands on. Uh, because the run is over and because we're gonna need to restart, I probably won't be able to do half the things it lands on. But let's just see what happens. No center. Okay. When we restart the run... We won't visit a Pokemon Center until we get our next critical hit. I'll, de I'll decree that's what we'll do. Uh, fucking shit. I went through the entirety of my Pokemon um, Emerald Cross Run up until Tate and Lisa without having a Wipeout. And even when I had a Wipeout there, even when I had my Wipeout there, I still had a full box of Pokemon that I could default to. I did not expect to get killed this fucking early. Come on. All right. Give me a quick second. I'm just gonna... Actually, hold on a second. I can always just do... Uh, what is it? A, B, start, select, right? Uh, let's go ahead and let's do that. There we go. Well, everybody, that was a nice little preamble, and now the Pokemon Leaf Green Run will start in proper. It, uh, <laughs> feels kind of pathetic to do so, but I guess after I cl conclude tonight's stream, I'm going to have to put uh, Squirtle, Rattata 1, and Rattata 2 as my in-memoriam Pokemon. You know, in retrospect, maybe I shouldn't have called my Squirtle Turtle Soup. I feel like that was almost me inviting it to be killed and turned into literal soup. I'm going to call myself Cozy this time. I'm wondering, though, if I got to name my rival something else. You know what? I think I know what I'm going to call this guy. I am going to call this guy... Crit... Hacks. There we go. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Fuck! Alright, I guess his name's Cryhacks and not Crithacks. I'm not going back and making that change. <sighs> Fuck. Well, now it's basically just a beeline to and from our objectives. Like I said last time, though, the uh, previous rule I put in about not being able to use the Pokemon Center until we get our next crit uh, still holds. So we'll be respecting that. I will still be getting uh, Squirtle, though, per what people voted on on Twitter. Come on. Come on. We already have seen all this. Oh, wait a minute. I should probably change the text speed. No wonder I was getting so pissed off. I'm really, like, I'm still kind of shaking <laughs> from that battle because I played it so tactfully. I, at every single moment of that battle, was like, all right, how can I kind of tactfully maneuver this battle so that I can take down this guy despite the incredible level disadvantage that I'm currently up against. And I did such a good job in that regard, and that guy just crit all his way to victory. And it's like, what the fuck, man? What the actual living fuckaroo fucky? Ugh... <sighs> Before we got into that rival battle, I was starting to queue up 
uh, my prior experiences with Pokemon Fire Red. So yeah, I got Fire Red in sixth grade. First time I played the game, uh, I had the fortune of encountering a, a shiny Mankey uh, on the very route where I just got trounced. Uh, and unfortunately, while I was able to evolve him to a shiny primate and keep him on as a valuable member of my team until the end of the game, that was back in the day where I was very much of the mindset of like, well, you get to the end of a Pokemon game and you gotta restart it. Uh, and so, when push came to shove, I decided, you know what? Oh, critical hit! Means we can now heal at Pokemon Centers again. Um, when I got to the end of that uh, particular Pokemon game, I decided, you know what, I'm going to restart. And it's too bad, because, man, if I had had the capabilities at the time, I a thousand million percent would have traded that shiny Primeape to somewhere else. But I just didn't have the, the, the technology or the friends group to do so at the time. All right, prize cam time. Let's do it. No center. All right. I guess what we previously <laughs> uh, set for ourselves earlier still stands. Yay. Congratulations, Blueberry. Um, last time around, Blueberry seemed like he was not Blueberry, but Turtle Soup seemed like he was pretty on the weak side. Blueberry seems like he's maybe a little bit stronger. I should check out his nature. See what his deal is. Uh, let's see. Torrent. Uh, of course, that's his ability. What's his nature? Impish nature. I, I want to say that's good, better defense and lower speed. But I don't remember what certainty off the top of my head. All right. We're just going to make ourselves a beeline to getting Oak's parcel. And then we are going to return home, and we're going to uh, get our Poke game on. <sighs> well, I mean, I guess, you know, we all have an aborted Pokemon run at some point. That was how my uh, original Nuzlocke run in Pokemon Alpha Sapphire ended. I um, I had a, a team full of many powerful Pokemon, but I made the mistake uh, of trying to battle uh, a trainer. It was like a rematch with a trainer that I did not realize at the time was uh, significantly more powerful than when I last faced off against him. He had like a an Agron and a Rhydon, or something of that nature. And I figured, oh, you know, these are both Pokemon that have a lot of weaknesses. You know, Rhydon, weak towards both grass and water type moves. Uh, Agron, weak towards, you know, ground type moves, fighting type moves, you name it. Uh, but they were just a little bit more powerful than I was anticipating, and they wrecked my team. It was really sad, because I had, like, a Gyarados on my team, and I'm like, well, of course Gyarados is going to rock these guys' worlds, but oh, they they rocked mine, unfortunately. Uh, I should pick up the potion from this guy before I forget to do so. There we go. Where again do you get the running shoes in this game? I know it's like relatively early on, but I really am in need for a little bit more speed, if I gotta be perfectly honest. Oof, I just looked it up again to kind of refresh my memory. You only get the running shoes after you beat Brock. Which is not good. Not good. Goodbye, Gary, aka Cryhacks. And here we go, on my way. 
so after my uh, original uh, Pokemon Fire Red run, where I had myself a beautiful, delightful, uh, shiny Primeape that I decided to sacrifice so I could start the game again, um, I actually lost my original copy of Fire Red. Oh, here we go. We can catch a, a Pidgey this time. Um, it's, a, it's a bit of a sad circumstance in which I lost the game, so I won't go into it right here. Uh, what I will say, though, is that eventually a very generous friend uh, gave me his copy of Fire Red. Um, and after I obtained that particular copy, uh, I played the game from the beginning and beat it all over again uh, in that particular run of the game uh, that I ended up, like, not restarting. Shit, really? Don't waste all my Pokeballs. Uh, in that particular run of... Pokemon uh, Fire Red. My team consisted of Cloyster. This is before Cloyster was cool and they gave him Shell Smash and the like. Um, Venusaur as my starter. Uh, Crobat, which was, um, it was really funny um, because, uh, what do we want to call this guy? Well, let's call this guy Wild Wings. Uh, Golbat, which was really funny because in that, in these games, um, any Pokemon that uh, had an evolution that was introduced in a subsequent generation, so like Onyx evolving into Celix or uh, Crobat evolving into Golbat. Um, th those Pokemon, when you attempt, attempt to induce evolution in them, uh, basically will begin to start evolving, but then they'll stop until you get the national decks. And so after a certain point in the game, after I had raised up um, Golbat's friendship enough, like every single time after every single uh, battle, he would begin to evolve um, after I would, like, level him up. Um, and it was only until well into the post-game that I was actually able to fully evolve him into a Crobat. Um, what other Pokemon were on my team? Also, I should heal up before they take me by surprise. Or, you know what? E even if they crit, they won't kill me, so I'm gonna go for it. There we go. And there we go, giving yourself some much-needed experience points. Would be great if I could level up all the way to level 7, but... Hey. I'm gonna use up my one potion right here and now. And I'm gonna go into town and, like last time, buy some more potions. Uh, the other members on my original team, like I said, I had Cloyster, um... Crobat, who evolved really late into the game, and um, Venusaur. I also had, uh, I also had the liberty of having um, a Nido Queen, which I believe I talked about a little bit earlier on in the stream, uh, and and uh, I had a very beloved Arcanine. What a good little doggo that was! And I wasn't even using him like a super competitive fashion. I just had him on my team because. He seemed like a cool Pokemon to have, and he really pulled his weight. He was really good. The last Pokemon that I had on my team in that game is really slipping from my memory right now, if I'm going to be totally honest, but it's okay. It'll come back to me eventually. It might have even... Actually, I'm trying to kind of rack my head. I wonder if it actually might have been another Mankey in honor of the original uh, shiny Mankey that I had. Well, at least this time it's a Rattata and a Pidgey instead of both two Rattatas. Maybe that's the key to our success this time around. All right. Uh, let's see here. Pokeball time, go. Yay, Rattata is caught. Uh, I'm going to go ahead. I am not going to battle the rival just yet, but I am uh, going to level up Squirtle so that uh, when we head into the next route ahead of us, well, a level 5 Rattata. Couldn't we have battled the level 5 Rattata here? I would have much rather obtained a level 5 Rattata first. But I got to be totally 100% perfectly uh, virtually honest with y'all. You know what? I'm beginning to get a little bit concerned about battling this guy that's continuously tail whipping me, if I'm going to be honest. I'm actually going to run. I'm actually, I'm going to tuck tail and 
skedaddle off. Because, oh shit, here we go. It's good old Mankey. Unfortunately, it's not a shiny Mankey. Shiny Mankey has like kind of a greenish tint to him. It, emphasis on the word uh, tint. It's not like super ultra saturated green. It's like very slight. I like it. it I know that it's not like a lot of other people's favorite uh, shiny coloration, but I personally have always been very fond of it. Just need to make sure that I can KO him on this next turn and we'll be A-OK. -okay. Goodbye, Mankey. Let's see, how much experience points? 52! I don't think that will get me to level 8 just yet, but it will get me bubble, which is nice, because that's a, a neat little stab move. How does, um, how does this special attack compare to his attack at this point? Let's see. 12 and 11, okay. So it's pretty, pretty, pretty even keel. All right. We're going to talk to the old man, and we're going to head on our way. How did the, the Weedle that he's about to battle, like, even appear out of the blue like that? Like, is it... Maybe it's his own Weedle? Maybe when he's throwing a Pokeball at it, he's actually just recalling it with the Pokeball that he originally caught the Weedle in many eons ago. These are the mysteries of Pokemon. go we'll get ourselves the teachy tv okay here we go route two uh we can still get radita and pidgey on this route but i believe that we can also get the nidorans as well i want to say unfortunately we can't use cut just yet we'll have to wait until after brock's gym to do that Who's it gonna be? God damn! This route, this game is devoted to give me, to into uh, giving me as many Raditas as possible. Here we go. Soften him up a little bit, you know. I really don't need the extra Radita, but, you know, it can always be useful to have another Pokemon in your party to give yourself a little bit more cushioning in case something bad should happen, so we're going to catch him. Ooh, have I been giving these Pokemon nicknames? I'm going to call this guy Sprout. I know it's not a very uh, Ratata-ish name. Eventually, when I uh, visit the... Uh... Also, why did I call this guy Wild West? <laughs> Maybe I would. I, I had... Um, what, what's it called? I had Metal Wolf Chaos XD on the brain. Yeah, unfortunately, I wasn't able to call this guy <laughs> anything. Yeah, I meant to call this guy Wild Wings after the um, fast food establishment of the same name, but clearly I was not thinking when that happened. Let's see, this guy has Runaway and this guy has Guts. Guts is preferable, but... Yeah. Brave Nature, though. That's a good nature for a Radita. It's actually a great nature for a Radita with Runaway, because Runaway... You know, normally your chances of running away in a wild encounter are dependent on your speed. If you're not super fast, having an ability of, like, Runaway actually really helps. Ooh, right. This is Viridian Forest, right? Uh, I just realized right here and right now, I don't have any Pokeballs on me but the one left in my bag, so I'm going to actually hightail it back to Viridian. Actually, before I do that, before I do that, let's go ahead and let's... Uh, actually, you know what? I can, I can keep him in battle just a little bit longer. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to level him up. 
right now we still can't return to a Pokemon Center until we get our next critical hit, so... We're gonna have to play strategically. Ugh. So yeah, I mentioned it a moment ago. Um, I recently uh, had the pleasure of beating a wonderful game by the name of Metal Chaos, uh, Metal Wolf Chaos XD, rather, I should say. Now, I'm not going to kind of uh, divulge my full thoughts on the game right here and right now, because uh, I'm going to be talking about Metal Wolf Chaos with the uh, Respawn Aim Fire crew guys uh, tomorrow evening, actually. Uh, but what I will say right here and right now is that game's a lot of fun. You know, I was a little bit apprehensive because it's a, like, the original Xbox era game from 2004. Uh, I know that it, you know, was a game that kind of rose to prominence in the first place because of all the memes and whatnot. And I very much went into it thinking like, okay, you know, like how much of this game's, you know, greatness is going to come down to its memes and how much of its greatness is going to come down to it just having, you know, legitimately good design. And I am happy to report that that game has real solid design. Like, Really, really actually solid design. Uh, I had a lot of fun with it, and I am looking forward to definitely chatting about that a little bit on Respawning Fire. What I will say right here and right now, and again, I'm you know going to try to kind of keep my thoughts to a minimum, um, is that I do think that the game could have done a little bit better job of communicating the fact that it's 90% like crazy, like guns to the wall, like shit hitting the fan like action game and then 10% kind of military sim game it's not like super duper ultra hyper simmy but it <laughs> it, it definitely uh, does require you to kind of like think a little bit fuck I, I was so wrapped up I was so wrapped up in talking about Metal Wolf Chaos, I didn't even realize that I had gone and visited a Pokemon Center. I went back into town so that I could go and buy Pokeballs from a Pokemon Mart. I got confused as I was talking about Metal Wolf Chaos, and instead I healed up my full team at a Pokemon Center. Fuck. This Twitch streaming stuff is harder than they tell you it is. Okay, well, to make up for that, to make up for that, here's what we're going to do. Next time I get a critical hit, uh, my no uh, Pokemon Center uh, kind of current mood set will remain. Uh, I'll have to get two critical hits in order for me to start visiting Pokemon Centers again. I feel like that would only be appropriate. But yeah, Metal Wolf Chaos should have done a better job of uh, communicating that you do have kind of like that sim element to it and that you need to actually really, uh, you know, train up your arsenal in order to kind of play that game effectively. All right. We are at Petalburg Woods. We have, um, there are many bug type Pokemon that we can get our hands on here. Uh, and we also have a very, very low possibility of catching ourselves uh, a Pikachu, but I think that will be a little bit tough for us to come by, considering that Pikachu is quite a rare Pokemon. But let's try our best. Hey, we got another potion. Ooh, who's it gonna be? Who's it gonna be? Motherfucking a half, it's Pikachu. I was not expecting that. Uh, is it possible that I might kill it if I use Tackle, considering I'm level 8 and he's level 3? You know what? I'm actually going to swap in one of my other Pokemon. I'm going to swap in Sprout. He's level 3 as well. He'll be able to tenderize him a little bit better. Oh, he's even being growled. There we go. Ooh, I didn't I did not realize that he actually knows Thundershock this early on. Fuck, really? Let's go for broke. I know he's not weakened up enough, but it'll be much more can fuck.
Uh, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to swap into my other Radita just so that he can stomach the next Thunder Shock. I don't want to swap into... Um, what's his face? Uh, I don't want to swap into Squirtle while Pikachu is using a Thunder Shock, so... Yeah. Ooh. God damn it. What the hell is going on with Pikachu's ability? All right. Pikachu, your time has come. Ah! Okay, well, he's not attacking me. He, my second Rattata, the one that I didn't give a nickname to because I was distracted, still might potentially be able to stay alive. Yes! Ladies and gentlemen, I am one of the few fortunate souls in this world that was able to obtain a Pikachu on his Nuzlocke run. Now, the unfortunate thing about this is that I'm probably not going to be able to get uh, any major bug type Pokemon for a little while now because me catching Pikachu here basically has excluded any opportunity of me getting my hands on a Weedle or a Caterpie. Um, but nevertheless, uh, what do we want to call this guy? Let's call this guy Croquette. Uh, in honor of the golden, delicious croquettes that I had when I was living in Japan. Okay. Having a, a Pokemon like Pikachu on our team that already has like such a good stab move uh, this early on is actually pretty good. So I'm going to heal him up. And depending on how things go, I might... Maybe I might swap him in a little bit here and there. Maybe what I'll do is I'll swap him in for the first trainer battle that I'll have. Which I think is actually right here. So let's do that. Um, so that he can gain a, a fair bit more XP coming out of our first battle. Here we go. Kind of weird that this is like your your first proper trainer battle that isn't with your rival. You'd think that your first proper trainer battle would have been way kind of earlier on. Now, thankfully, Weedle is not like a very powerful Pokemon. Um, but <laughs> uh, he is level six, so I do have to be a little bit cautious. Ooh, I should have gotten a, a poison heal. Fuck! I don't feel like... Like, I genuinely think that in the entire history of Pokemon, there are few moves that are as annoying as Poison Sting. Like, Poison Sting somehow always poisons your Pokemon despite only having, like, a 30% chance of doing so. Alright, after this, I'm gonna have to heal. I, I don't think I'll swap him out. Not that Pikachu will appreciate the experience points. Yeah, here we go. Yeah, good news is that we have a lot of potions on our side. I might have to... I'm guessing that after this I'll have to very carefully walk back to uh, the <coughs> Pokemart that we previously came from. Now, this is an opportunity where I would really appreciate the speed reduction that Bubble Beam potentially provides, you know? Goodbye, Weedle. Caterpie, okay. It's actually, it's pretty good that we'll be able to obtain some money from fighting this guy, because that money will basically directly be funneled into us getting the antidote that we need to heal Blueberry. Alright. And again, thank god that these bug type Pokemon are not very strong. Ooh. 
Sorry, buddy. Come on. We have not gotten a crit in a really long time. I gotta be honest. It was kind of insane how many crits we got in our first aborted run. But there's nothing. Alright, let's finish it off with a tackle. Oh! A critical hit! Ladies and gentlemen, let's bring up the prize wheel of criticality. Five push-ups. Now, why is it that I keep landing <laughs> on five push-ups in the other thing? I think I gotta... Maybe I gotta be a little bit more particular in the way that I spin the prize wheel, because it has not been offering me a great diversity of <laughs> different kind of things to do. But nevertheless, I'll do the push-ups. Let's go ahead and let's bring in our top-down camera. I might also want to consider maybe using like a digital prize wheel in the future, because that'll kind of remove the weirdness of it landing on the same spots over and over. Anyways. Man, I'm tired. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Oh. And uh, per what I set for myself earlier, um, <clears throat> I still uh, cannot heal from a Pokemon Center. Uh, per my previous slip up, we will need to wait for our next critical hit before we will uh, allow ourselves to do so. Right, so in these gens, your Pokemon would get hit every few steps uh, by poison damage if they were poisoned. So we just need to make sure that we're not accidentally threading that needle too closely and heal him whenever we need to so good old Blueberry doesn't go bye-bye. All right, he's at 11. I'll probably need to heal him before we get to the uh, Pokemart, but... It's not that bad. Let's see, four. Yep, yeah, I'm gonna heal him. Don't want to make any more mistakes. I wish it wouldn't uh, show that, like, poison healing animation every time. I gotta be honest. Uh this is a needless walk around. And there we go. Oh, uh, shit. No. Nope. There we go. Enjoy it, Blueberry. Okay, while we're here, before we return to Viridian Forest, because I'm realizing that Viridian Forest is kind of a poison trap, I'm actually going to take the opportunity to level up Pikachu a little bit uh, on this route just below us. There's a couple of Pidgey roaming around here, and so I figure that Pikachu's uh, Thunder Shocking uh, can potentially come in useful. Get him. Yeah. Not that great, but I'll take it. Come on, Pikachu. Come on. You gotta do it. It is... Jesus. Oh. 
definitely is a little leveled up now, so that's nice. Sadly, there were no crits in that battle, so... I'm gonna go ahead while I'm here, I'm gonna level him up just a little bit more as well. I did not actually realize I was that close to level 9, so that's convenient for me. Probably going to want to heal up with a potion after this, actually. Goodbye. Okay. Uh, you know what? I'm actually going to go ahead and I'm going to battle one more Pokemon in this route as Squirtle, even though I already got to level 10. Uh, just because... I want him to get healed up a little bit more so that when I heal myself with a potion, the hit points it will heal it, uh, heal me with will be a little bit more kind of worthwhile. Goodbye, Pidgey. All right, potion time. Okay, we're actually at the point in our run thus far where we're strong enough that we could take on our rival if we wanted to. Um, but... I would rather not. I'd rather be just leveled up a little bit more. I, I suspect we could probably take him on and beat him, like, pretty resoundly, but we'll end up probably using a lot of potions. So let's let's put the kibosh on that for just the time being. Okay, there's some more trainers around here. There are also a lot of items to be found, so let's actually focus for the time being on getting items. So anything free that we can get in the environment to make our life a little bit easier will be much appreciated. What the fuck are the chances that I encounter two Pikachu in a row? Jesus. Uh, let's see here. You don't really have a good Pokemon to battle this guy with. Um... Uh, I can always just run if I need to. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to run. I Here's the thing. I'm pretty confident that I'd be able to 2KO him pretty resoundingly with Bubble. Um, but even if it, he doesn't KO me, if he uses Thundershock once, he'll do a fair bit of damage. So feels bad to run from the second Pikachu that you encounter in a row in the wild in um, Petalburg Forest. Wait, did I say Petalburg Forest? Ugh, Viridian Forest. My bad. Uh, you know what? I will battle Caterpie because this guy doesn't have access to any poison-type moves. Can't poison me, and he's pretty weak, so I think I can handle him. What would be great is if we were to encounter a Kakuna or a Metapod, because those guys only know Harden when you encounter them in the wild in these woods. Um, and Harden, while it can make them very resilient to damage, does not make them very resilient towards special damage. Um, which means uh, that we can basically just whittle them down entirely using Bubble and Thundershock. Speaking of which, I should probably not use Bubble as much. I should probably use a few more tackles because I cannot heal up my power points just yet. Yay, 37. Actually, I should probably just... yeah. I'm not going to battle this guy. I'm going to... I'm just going to ignore some of these Pokemon for the time being. Let's see. Oh, look at that. That move has 30 power points. And so I, I got concerned when I saw that it had turned yellow, but that only meant that I was down to 15. All 
Okay. So, in terms of other games I've been playing lately, I, I mentioned Metal Wolf Chaos, which I had the um, great liberty of managing to complete last night. Uh, I also, also, um, have been playing Chicory, A Colorful Tale. That game is... Oh, I did not actually mean to do that. I just meant to <laughs> inspect him, but yeah. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to put him at the front of the party. I'm going to see how much damage I can do against... Whatever bug type Pokemon he's going to use against me. Yeah, Chicory, A Colorful Tale, that's a real fun Zelda-like game. I talked about it on Respawn Aim Fire as well. That game does such a great job of kind of evoking the sort of same, just visceral Zelda energy of uh, Link's Awakening, which it is so clearly based off of. Uh, and painting everything, which is sort of the kind of main mechanic of that game, uh, is real fun. I actually, I really love how you can kind of swim through paint after a certain point. I, I was really confused when they introduced that mechanic because I couldn't figure out how to use it to escape from the uh, room I was deposited in uh, after I got it. But once I figured that out, it was great. Oh, here we go. Poison Sting time. What is going to... God damn it! What the fuck is going on with Poison Sting? I am going to kill Weedle, and then I'm going to swap in Squirtle for whoever's next. And I am going to pray to God that Squirtle does not get poisoned. Oh, critical hit! Ladies and gentlemen, critical hit. That means that the uh, curse that has been afflicted upon us that prevented us from healing at a Pokemon Center is now lifted. Uh, however, we also have to spin the prize wheel yet again. Uh, and hopefully it won't reland on no centers. <laughs> this time around, I'm gonna just move in a little bit before I do the spin, spin, spin already to make sure that I don't end up landing on the same few spots again. Hot sauce shot! Woo! This is um, a spot that the prize wheel has never landed on until this point, despite the fact that it was a spot that was present during the Emerald Cross run. Um, let's go ahead. Let's uh, bring out our prize camera view uh, and bring in our main camera view. Real nice and zoomed in like such. So here's the deal. Here is the diddly daddly deal. Uh, I have... Uh, Melinda's uh, Chipotle pepper sauce. Seems real spicy. I have myself a little shot glass. What I'm wondering right now is, is it an extra and unneeded formality for me to put some of the hot sauce into the shot glass? Should I maybe just chug the hot sauce? Hmm, actually that looks like kind of like a, that looks like it could be a pretty big hole. I feel like I might be in for a little bit of pain if I chug it, but it might actually be more fun that way, especially if I don't really know what's in store for me. So you know what? I'm going to, I'm just going to do a little yoop into my mouth and we'll see if that's too much or too little. All right, here we go. Down the hatch. Ah, oh, damn it. It's too, it's not, is it too hard? It's not viscous enough. Nothing fell out when it, when I did that. Hold on. Oh. <laughs> oh. 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 Whoa. Whoa. That's peppery. Okay, I think I know how we're going to do this in the future. Whew. Ugh. Oh man, my eyes are watering. Real bad. Well, I asked for something from the prize wheel that wasn't push-ups or not being able to heal from a Pokemon Center, and I got what I wanted. Jesus. Let's switch back over to the game.
Ugh. The, the, thankfully, the, the spiciness has subsided at this point. Um, man, that was tough. That was real tough. Ooh, man. Just don't, don't, I, I have enough antidotes and I can finally heal out of Pokemon Center, but just don't, don't poison me in this battle. You have one more opportunity to strike me down. Don't, don't poison me during that final opportunity, please. Just use String Shot again, just use String Shot again. It's going to be A-OK -okay if you do that. There we go. Good little Weedle. Oh, what a good little Weedle you are, aren't you? Yes, you're a nice little Weedle. All right. And there we go. Blueberry is at level 10. And he learned Withdraw. Nice. Kakuna. Oh. Oh. You know what? <laughs> if that Kakuna only knows how to use Harden, this would be a good opportunity to train up Wild West a little bit. Let's do that. Yeah, he only knows how to use Harden. Actually, now that I'm thinking it through, this might actually be a little bit difficult to do with just Wild West. I know that uh, Tackle has a lot of power points, but... Ugh, this could turn into a War of Attrition real quick. Or unless, uh, unless a crit should happen. You know, never know what might happen, you know? I'm actually going to be pretty surprised if a crit doesn't happen. Also, he keeps using Harden, but I feel like I keep hitting for the same amount of damage. He's going to run out of moves soon. This ended up being actually a pretty good decision. Well, here we go. Critical hit time. Let's spin that wheel. Again, we're just going to do it a couple of things like this, just to make sure we don't get a repeat. Oh, go broke. Uh, this means uh, that we have to buy a bunch of items and then immediately uh, release those items so that we basically uh, completely deplete the amount of money that we have. Now, we're pretty early on in our run. I think we only have like maybe like 500 Poke Dollars uh, on hand right now with the money that we're going to get from this trainer. Wow, look at that. All the way to level four. Unfortunately, no flying type moves yet, which is unfortunate. Um, so uh, us losing uh, all our money right here and right now isn't going to be the worst thing ever, but... Still kind of sucks. Now that he's level four, I don't I don't feel as uncomfortable about sending him out into battle. Unfortunately, Wild West, aka Wild Wing, um is not going to be very useful against Brock, considering he is a frail flying-type Pokémon, but it'll be good to have him around because he's, you know, pretty versatile, and flying-type is a pretty good stab to have on your hand. Here we go. We learned Sand Attack, which is nice, but admittedly not as useful for you to use as it is for your opponents to use. When your opponents use Sand Attack, it is devastating, but for you, it's just, you know, it is what it is. And don't worry, I'm, I'm paying close attention to Pikachu's status. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to... I just realized there's no reason why I can't use an antidote, so I'm just going to do that right here and right now. And thank God, you, you forget how valuable being able to heal from a Pokemon Center is. Actually, now that our team is quite a bit leveled up and a lot more diverse, we might be ready at long last to take on our rival uh, on the route just adjacent to where we are right now. Hmm. 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 
Let's... I'm going to heal up my Pokemon. I'm going to do a quick little team eval. Of course, it would only be, you know, a battle performed by Squirtle, uh, Pikachu, and Wild West, a.k.a. Wild Wing. You know what? I want to I wanna level up uh, Croquette and Wild West, a.k.a. Wild Wing, a little bit more because both those Pokemon uh, could do really well against uh, the two Pokemon that Cryhax has. Um, but at their current levels, uh, Pikachu's just a little bit too weak, and Pidgey lacks a strong stab move. So let's go ahead and let's change that. Oh, and I just realized I did not uh, deplete all my money from the Pokemon Mart, so let's go ahead and, after this battle, change that real quick. Yeah. Goodbye, Pidgey. Now, when I was kind of conceptualizing uh, this uh, before today's stream, I was thinking that, you know, there are a lot of Pokemon centers that sell Poke Dolls. Uh, in the game, and Poke Dolls typically sell for like 50 Poke Dollars. And so that would probably be the most convenient way for me to kind of like load up on items that I'll then immediately sell so I can go broke. Uh, but it seems like this place is not offering any Poke Dolls at the moment. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna buy myself a potion, and then I'm going to immediately. Uh, get rid of that potion so it will be like as if I had. I never had that particular potion in my inventory to begin with. All right. Back to the grind. <sighs> so earlier I talked about how I'd been playing Metal Wolf Chaos XD and Chicory recently and I've been really kind of enjoying them quite a bit. Um, something else that I experienced recently, uh, not a game, uh, but very much a wonderful experience in its own right, uh, was um, the Wachowskis Speed Racer movie. Boy oh boy, I gotta say, I, for years I had heard nothing but bad things about that movie. Um, I want to say that that movie came out when I was in 8th grade. It came out in uh, 2008, which sounds about right. <laughs> and I remember when it came out, uh, the kind of response to it being very lukewarm. I remember there being a lot of features talking about how the movie just wasn't that great. And I remember there also being at the time like this really like incredibly strong anti CGI sentiment. Um, and that kind of went hand in hand with the game's sort of poor reception. Everyone's like, well, of course it, you know, did poorly. It's because you know, CGI is the dog's bollocks. Um, I went many, many years without seeing that movie. And then slowly but surely, I started to hear whispers about how apparently that movie was better, much better uh, than people originally deemed it to be when it came out. I know um, one Tim Gettys of Kind of Funny would talk uh, passionately uh, from time to time about how great it was. Um, and I also would see like little... Uh, vignettes here and there on Twitter and on not Instagram. What, what was the one social media platform that was primarily for image sharing that uh, used to share a lot more pornographic images, but then people took it over and then they could no longer share pornographic images on it? Uh, not Imager. Whatever the case was. Tumblr. That's it. I saw lots of content on Tumblr as well about how, hey, that movie's real freaking sick, how it's a real good time, real good ass. Uh, enjoyable motion picture uh, and so I decided you know what let's sit down let's actually watch uh, this beautiful beast of a speed racer of a film and man oh man that movie what a like fantastically sincere mindscape fuck of a film like that movie is a gorgeous gorgeous like visual delight and on top of that a movie that is just so like lovingly 
true and honest and sincere to, you know, what it is, which is just, like, a very, like, non-cynical, like, I keep saying sincere, but, like, there's no better word to describe that movie with. That movie is just sort of so, like, hey, we just want to tell a, a rendition of Speed Racer that is really kind of true to kind of, like, the original upbeat tone of that, uh, you know, anime. And, man, they really... They really go for it, and I respect it all the more because of that. I feel like there's a, another version of that movie that could have ended up like the James Gunn written Scooby Doo movie that was like very kind of cynical and kind of poking fun at itself and, you know, being like, haha, weren't the, you know, 70s like a real drug addled weird time, but uh, they didn't do that at all with that movie. They chose instead to make a movie that, like, <clears throat> was what the people that were making Speed Racer back in the day, back in the 70s, what they in their heads imagined Speed Racer as being like, but were you know, probably incapable of doing so because of the technological constraints that they were dealing with. I don't need to train up uh, Croquette that much more. The, the, the um, Pidgey that I'm battling is level 9, so if he's level 7, I'll probably be A-OK. -okay. I mean, I, I took out that Pidgey in one hit. However... For my own pitchy, Wild West, aka Wild Wing, uh, I do want to get him to just a high enough level where I can finally learn a flying type move because I think that will make the battle much easier. I don't know what the first flying type move is that I'm going to be able to learn. I want to say that it's probably Gust because Wing Attack seems like it's a little bit more of an advanced maneuver that the game wouldn't uh, bequeath to me right away. Um, but yeah, that's the current game plan. Croquette, level 7. Uh, Pidgey, level whatever it takes for me to get my first flying-type move. Uh, whew. But yeah, Speed Racer. Fantastic fucking movie. Definitely, like, when I reflect back on every other movie that came out in 2008, definitely one of the better movies of that year. If you've not seen Speed Racer, just ignore everything you've heard about it and go into it with a fresh and open mind because you are going to have your mind blown guaranteed uh it's definitely like obviously I have a tremendous amount of respect for the matrix i think that the matrix is a wonderful film in its own right that i've only uh, come to enjoy more and more as time has gone on but i think i might actually enjoy speed racer more even though i'll concede that the matrix is probably a better put together movie and also a fantastic uh, soundtrack i believe it was michael giacchino uh, he's obviously always the goat on whatever he contributes his work to, and he was uh, especially the goat on that movie. I'm a little surprised that we have not had a, uh, a crit in some time. It's really like feast or famine uh, on this run. Like, either we're getting crits every second, third turn, or we're <laughs> getting no crits at all. Goodbye, Ratata. Oh, well, I... Huh. Okay, I thought that would do a little bit more damage. I guess I'm, I'm too used to my Thundershocks immediately killing Pidgeys, I guess. Goodbye. It'd be great if we could, um... teach Croquette uh, Quick Attack sooner rather than later, but I think we'll need to level him up a little bit more for us to get to that point. All right, Wild West, a.k.a. Wild Wing, show me what you got. Uh. All right, I think I'm going to have to heal at the Pokemon Center after this one. I got to be honest, I, um... So I'm a huge fan of... Pidgey's front sprite in this game. I think it looks way better than his back sprite um, in Ruby Sapphire Emerald. No, wait, hold on a sec. I got my wires crossed there. I really love Pidgey's front sprite in this game, but I think his back sprite makes him look real derpy. Stick with me on this one. His back sprite reminds me of like an Angry Birds DLC character. Like, oh, there, it's the brown bird, big brown. He really lays a smack down on his opponents if you pay an extra... $3 to unlock him. Yep, 
Yeah, I don't want uh, an accidental crit to end my run early, so I'm going to go back to the Pokemon Center, heal up just a little bit, and then we will... Actually, you know what? I should probably go to the route uh, just west of us right now so I can start getting in the proper mindset for when we take on our rival yet again. After I take on the rival, uh, I'm going to swap Squirtle to the front of the party. Uh, I'm going to more or less exclusively focus on leveling him up. And I will hope that by the time that we get to the uh, Brock gym battle, he'll be leveled up enough that it, he won't be able to take him out in a nasty surprise, because that would be pretty bad. Ooh, critical hit! Let's go ahead and let's bring in the prize cam. Draw a Pokemon time. If anybody in the chat right here and right now uh, has an idea uh, as to what Pokemon I should draw, let me know and I will fulfill your wildest dreams and desires. Uh, if not, I am going to use uh, the random Pokemon generator to choose uh, what Pokemon we are going to be drawing. <laughs> Ugh. That was a hot sauce burp, by the way. And I can feel the hot sauce rising back through my throat right now. All right, I have randompokemon.com propped up. Let's go ahead and let's generate. Sobble, okay. Ladies and gentlemen, we're drawing Sobble uh, all the way from Gen 8, so quite removed from where we are at the moment in Generation 3. As you can see, last time we Oh, hold on a sec. Let me bring in our top-down desk camera. Uh, last time around, uh, we drew a uh, good old Mew. Uh, we also drew a good old cast form with his three booby, cloudy thingamabobbies. And now, we get to draw good old Sobble. This is going to be fun. Okay. Thing about Sobble is that Sobble, uh, you know what? Let me just push my uh, Corsair keyboard in a little bit here. I don't know why I said Corsair, by the way. I'm not, like, sponsored by it. All right. Thing about Sobble is Sobble has a big, round, almost, I guess, kind of like a squat, pear like head. I want to say that it looks like that. And it has a nice little... Um, I want to say, like, leafy, kind of flaggy thing on top of its head that kind of looks like this and like this. But it has a little kind of thin strip of blue at the top like that, like such. But this part over here is, like, it's greenish yellow, which I'll denote with these little, little lines like that. Now, Sobble's head itself, Sobble's little eyes are, like, I want to say that they're like nice and circular, like such. Uh, they have like a little kind of like sheen to them. They're very um, reflective and glow in the darky. So I'm going to add those little kind of like details like that to kind of show that we're dealing with a Pokemon that, you know, has real reflective, beautiful eyes. And he also has, he kind of has cast form eyes in that he has, I want to say, a bandana around his eyes, like such. Actually, I think that might be incorrect, but it's okay. We're jazzing here. Now, the thing about um, this particular Pokemon that we're currently drawing, Sobble, is that uh, he's not particularly happy. He actually uh, has an eternal frown or scowl on his face at all times. He's actually, like, more depressed than he is angry, but you get the idea. I'm going to also insert two little nostril holes for him. They're very small, but I figured that it would be inappropriate if I, you know, didn't include them. Now, Sobble's body is interesting because Sobble, of course, has two little arms, which I'll just, I'll do the bare minimum of right here and right now, but his, his main body is, like, 
really small. I'm actually, I'm drawing it a little bit more plump than I remember it being, but I'm just doing that just to kind of cover my ass in case his head uh, proportionally is too big. Now, I remember Sobble's arms being very basic. I remember them kind of being like these weird, like, magnet hook looking things like this. Like, this is a Pokemon that is designed for gripping to all sorts of surfaces. Uh, this is not a Pokemon that has any time to kind of, like, properly wield cooking wear in the heat of the moment. Definitely not the kind of Pokemon that you would trust with Season 2 of Cozy Bear's Cooking, or for that matter, Season 3 of Season 4. Um, and I think it's the same thing with his uh, feats, where they, they kind of have these, like, little again, pitchfork, magnet-esque shapes to them. Now, you'd probably be looking at this, uh, you know, beautiful, illustrious picture of Sobel and thinking to yourself, well, this is pretty good, this is pretty beautiful, but it's missing something. There's something that's not quite right about this, and you'd be correct, that's because Sobel has a tail, and it has a chameleon-like tail, uh, kind of like Kecleon, which means that we're gonna just real quick do our best to kind of draw ourselves a nice little cinnamon roll. I remember it being very thick, so we don't want to we don't want to overdo it. And I want to say that there's one more thing. What is that one more thing? I think his arms might have, maybe I think his front arms or his back arms might have a little bit of like a darker shade of blue on them. Either that, or there's like another spot on Sobble that has a little bit more of a darker shade of blue. Maybe it's at the top of his head. Or... Hmm. Maybe there's like another marking or something. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to send put a couple of markings like that on his head. There's a lot of Pokemon that look like that. Nobody will give me that much crap if he has markings like that. All right. Let's go ahead and let's bring in our main camera uh, to show off our masterpiece in all its glory. I think we captured the, the essence of Sobble pretty well. I don't think that uh, we strayed too far from <laughs> our little chameleon friend on this one, now did we? I think we did a good job. I think if we met the actual real-life Sobble, he'd be quite impressed. So impressed that he'd actually uh, fork off his own tail like our Sobble is doing and eat it like a nice, delicious cinnamon roll. Good job, Alex. All right. Let's get back into the game. Okay, where were we? We were in the middle of battling a Mankey. Uh, the Mankey had been doing some damage to us, but uh, we had been trading bull blows. I was about to say bulls, but that's not what we're talking about. We might... It's possible that if you were heating up a, a cinnamon roll in the microwave that you might put it in a bowl. Maybe if you're the kind of person that prefers to eat your sweet set of bowls instead of, uh, you know, other forms of uh, tableware. Man, I am shocked that it is taking us this long to learn our first flying type move. I'm going to level him up to level 9 and then come hell or high water, we are taking on the rival. It's unfortunate, because, like, if I knew how to use a flying tape move here... Oh, hey, it's Spearow. Not a lot of other um, areas in the game where we can get our hands on Spearow. Which means that we are unlikely to get our hands on the Farfetch that we can get later on if we were to trade him. Goodbye. Well, that's a pretty good XP yield, but we are going to want to heal this guy up. Toot sweet. We're gonna get him to level 9. If he learns how to use a flying type move then and there, great. If not, well, I'm just gonna head on our cozy way and take on our rival. Alright, let's go. Oof. Come on. 
Give me some low level yet still XP, XP replendent Pokemon that we can train up against, you know? There we go. Thank you for giving me the free opportunity to continue to pummel you down, good old Mankey. I just need to defeat one more Pokemon and we will learn whether or not we're going to be able to learn ourselves a flying type move. Man, it would have been so incredibly clutch if we had been able to defeat the rival last time around. What? Uh. Come on, Wild West, a.k.a. Wild Wings. Goodbye. All right, come on. Gust time. Yes! We did it. Uh, and you know what? I am... I was about to say feeling adventurous and would like to take him on. Now I'm wondering if that's a good idea, considering he's not at full HP. You know what? It is a good idea. I can always swap out to Squirtle if I need to. All right. Gary, your days are numbered. Again, I think it's completely outrageous that the game can potentially funnel you into a trap this early on with your rivals team being this much more powerful right off the bat. Even if you didn't train up yourself at all. Oof, normally, a ground type move would be quite effective against a um, electric type Pokemon like Pikachu, the Croquette. But sorry, I meant to say Croquette, the Pikachu. Uh, but in this particular instance, didn't uh, do all that much. All right, Wild West, this is what we've been training up for. Let's do it. Take him. Yes! Wow, can you look at that? I have to believe we were struggling against this guy earlier. Goodbye. Yay. Of course, he won't, still won't be of much use against Brock, but it's always good to have a nice backup. No, I actually, I, I really trained up all real nice and hard for that battle. I definitely did not luck out. All right. Where to next? I guess we might as well kind of just explore down here. There's nothing much for us just yet. Uh, we have to beat ourselves eight gym leaders before we can uh, take on the wonders and perils of Victory Road. So we're going to go skedaddle, hightail, and be on our way. And it's, uh, I don't remember how many more trainers are left in Viridian Woods at this point, but I'm going to go out on a limb and say that there are not that many. So I'm pretty sure that I can just muscle through and head on over to Pewter Gym almost immediately and not have to backtrack anymore. That's the hope. And there we go. I had to, um, so last night, uh, at the very last minute, my parents were like, hey, you know, we do too much cooking around here. You got to make dinner. Uh, and so I decided to make uh, some pizzas for dinner. Uh, I always have a little bit of frozen pizza dough hanging around in my um, freezer. Uh, usually... Uh, leftovers from like my various cooking experiments. I think that actually this time around uh, the doughs were left over from like prior episodes of Coast Bear's Cooking. I had some uh, beet infused uh, pizza dough that was like red-ish in color. It was more like a red like almost primrose color I want to say. 
Uh, and I also had some spinach infused dough that was green in color. Neither of them, like I honestly just prefer the real McCoy when it comes to pizza dough to these weird variations, but uh, both worked great in a pinch uh, as dough that I used to make some yummy little last minute pizzas. I uh, made a nice little cheese blend of mozzarella and Jarlsberg cheese. I um, topped them with some extra olives that we had hanging around. I probably should have just used up the entire <laughs> olive jar, if I got to be honest. Uh, I also had some leftover um, pizza sauce that was frozen that I was able to defrost in time and put on it. Uh, I sprinkled a little bit of uh, extra mozzarella and um, what is it, Italian seasoning as well. Worked out real nice. Okay. Not a lot of great diversity in terms of this guy's team. Uh, in any case, getting back to the subject of pizzas, I am gearing up for when we eventually uh, are going to have to do the next big pizza experience trademark within the cozy household. It's actually going to involve some uh, pizzas made with uh, doughs that you have never seen before. Uh, and that's all I'll say on the matter. Actually, if you've uh, ever visited my Instagram account, you might have seen some hints, some whispers of what you can look forward to in the future. I won't kind of divulge many more details beyond that, but yeah, that's sort of what's currently going on. I'm currently working on some fun little pizza stuff in the background, and this was a um, this was a nice little kind of warm up to when I eventually put these new pizza plans into motion. Okay. Hmm. By the way, if I'm a little bit tired right now, it's not because I am just so bored of this game, it's because I only got uh, four hours of sleep last night on account of me needing to beat Metal Wolf Chaos uh, XD. Don't you worry, I will uh, definitely do my best after tonight's stream is over, after I've beaten Brock to retire really quickly for the evening so that I don't have to put up with this any longer. I will head off to the land of some nabulism, hypnos of w w whatever term you want to refer it to, the land of Nod. I think that's the term that people use to refer to sleeping. Uh, is this guy a trainer? I don't remember. It's been a little while, so I forget what the deal is with all these guys. Oh yeah, he is a trainer. He got me good. I gotta be honest, he got me good. Now, Good news is, uh, he implied that he only has evolved Pokemon, which is great because only evolved Pokemon that we'll have around here are Pokemon like Metapod and Kakuna, uh, that will repeatedly raise their defenses, but I have no means of raising their special defenses, which means that I can go to town with Bubble and get some free, cheap, easy experience points. Good for leveling up for our eventual Brock Gym battle. By the way, I don't mean to continue neglecting the two Raditas that we have in our party. After the Brock Gym battle, I'll, I'll probably swap one of them into the PC box, because I'll probably not have any need for him anymore. And the other one I'll raise up a little bit. I When I first caught Radita, I think I was going to kind of launch into this, but I just want to say right here and right now, Radita might not be my favorite generational rat uh, of any of them generational rats from the Pokemon games, but... I have a soft spot for him. I think that he has a pretty diverse and interesting move pool. I think that he has some like surprisingly kind of fantastic moves in the form of things like Hyper Fang and Super Fang, for example, the latter of which can, you know, take down your hit points to half of what they are, regardless of what Pokemon you are. Uh, I think his coverage moves are pretty impressive as well. Being able to learn stuff like Thunderbolt, I want to say, uh, among other like weird special moves. Of course, he doesn't really have the stats to properly use them, um, but the fact that he can learn them at all is impressive. And so, yeah, I always have had a lot of love for Radita and Raticate. I didn't particularly care either way for the regional forms of uh, Radita and Raticate that they introduced in uh, Pokemon uh, Sun and Moon. I mean, I think it was kind of cool that they decided to kind of go back to the drawing board with them and give them another 
you know, lease on life, another breath of fresh air. But it was a little bit disappointing that, like, it, it felt like every single other um, regional form that they introduced in that gen got, like, a nice little competitive kick in the pants and, you know, suddenly became, like, actual viable within the VGC format. But Raticate didn't really seem to get the same boost, and that's a little bit disappointing, to be totally honest. Here we go. Slowly but surely, we are leveling up our special attack stat. Now we just have a little bit more grass to go. We got one more trainer, and we are pewter city free. Here we go. The perfect kind of Pokemon to encounter in the wild in this particular route. One more, and we will be good. We are running out of uh, PPs for Bubble, but we will be able to heal up very soon, so it won't matter that much. Oh, man. This has been quite the stream. I was not anticipating that we would get kicked in the pan set early on and have to restart things, but shit happens. Uh, let's check up on... Our team. Hmm. You know what? We're not exactly flush with a ton of potions at the moment, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to send them out to battle, and if I need to, I can always... You know what? Perfect. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to swap out Blueberry for Wild West, a.k.a. Wild Wings, and have him take on Yield Weedle. Get gusted. Oh, right after a string shot. Jesus, how is it that these guys are able to become so fast the moment that they do one string shot? Is, is a, the, like, speed differential between us really that narrow? Come on. Come on. There we go. There we go. Ah, uh, come on, be another Metapod. Oh, it is Weedle, uh, Caterpie. I had a major brain fart on that one. All right, let's bubble it up. I'll probably be uh, talking about this a little bit more on Thursday's stream, but Otakuthon, the uh, Montreal anime convention is coming up real soon. And I am real excited to attend it. It has been like quite a few years since I last attended Otakathon. Unfortunately, uh, I'm not going to be able to attend it with anyone this time around. Uh, I am going to probably meet up with some people that I do know at the convention, but... Um, <coughs> unfortunately, uh, other than that, I'm not really going to have anyone else to kind of like accompany me with on that journey. It's too bad. Uh... Pokemon, uh, sorry, not Pokemon, anime conventions are always so much fun when you do it with other people. I'm not going to bother wasting my time talking to every single person in Pewter City right here and right now, but I will uh, take the opportunity to talk to the people that are in the Pokemon Center because they might have some useful stuff. Hmm. Interesting how that one older gentleman over there is, um... I just was gonna say, interesting how this one older gentleman being like, Hey, Team Rocket is at Mount Moon, huh? I'm on the phone scram, that's your first introduction to Team Rocket. Your first introduction to any of the evil, sinister groups in any of the Pokemon games. That's funny. Uh, but yeah, uh, what I love about anime conventions is obviously there's a lot of great cosplay there. There's a lot of, you know, great opportunities to, you know, immerse yourself in an 
anime-like world, if your imagination. But more than that, well, there's only one trainer in Brock's gym. I thought there would have been at least two. You would think from the layout of this gym there would be another trainer standing here like this. Um, what's great about anime conventions is that they're a great opportunity to discover new anime, and also, if there's like a game room, new games. Um, you know, I don't necessarily mind being algorithm. I don't necessarily mind it when your crunchy rolls, your funimations, your what have yous, like tell you, hey, because you enjoy this anime, you might like that anime. But 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 but. But it's always great when you are given the opportunity to discover a new anime that was introduced to you via someone being like, hey, I really like this show, and I think that you all too. You should check it out. Uh, be it, you know, via an in-person... Uh, oh, look, do we want to... Yes, we most definitely want to delete Bubble. Bubble will uh, lower the opponent's speed, but Water Gun is the superior move. Okay. W whatever level I'm at after defeating Sandshrew, we're going to want to level up one more level before we take on Brock, just to be extra certain. Man, I gotta love, like, they um, improved a lot of sprites uh, over their original appearance in Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald for the Fire Red and Leaf Green games, and I freaking love Sandshrew's sprite in this game. It's just so curvy and beautiful and perfect. Um, the thing is, is like, I, I think that the original sprite that they conceived for Sandshrew, for Pokemon, Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald, it does a good job of communicating a Sandshrew that is like hanging out and having fun in the sand, but that Sandshrew, the Sandshrew in Pokemon Fire Red and Leaf Green is an absolute unit, an, an absolute just specimen of a Pokemon, and I will forever respect it for that. Oh, I just realized we're really near Diglett Road. Uh, <laughs> conveniently, uh, the way that Nuzlocke rules work, we'll basically be guaranteed to get ourselves a Diglett because Diglett is the only Pokemon that you can catch on Diglett Road. Man, I didn't level up my special attack stat at all. Jesus. Wait a minute. I, I said earlier on in the run that Impish is, like, high defense, low speed. Uh, I'm pretty certain that's the um, nature of my... Yep, yeah, that is Blueberry's nature. But I'm wondering if it's actually, like, high defense, low special attack. Let's look it up real quick. Okay, uh, so Impish does increase defense, but what does it diminish? Fuck, it diminishes special attack. Oh, well, that's too bad. Mm, you know, it's taking me a little while longer here to uh, grind than I was anticipating. What if... I get myself, like, halfway to level 15, and then trust that the Geodude that I'll battle will take me to actual level 15 during the battle. I think that's a that's a fair compromise. E even Metapod, like, this guy normally doles out a lot of uh, experience points, but it's actually not going to be that much, considering I'm that much of a higher level. Yeah, I'm going to battle three more wild Pokemon, and then we're going to head off to take on Yield Brock. Goodbye. This is Pokemon number two. We're going to do one more after this, and we are going to head to the gym battle.
Oh, here we go. We might actually end up battling one more wild Pokemon because we are quite a few paces removed from the uh, little building that will return us to Pewter City. That is something that is characteristic of um, these Pokemon games that they didn't really kind of follow up on much in the future, which is having all these buildings that kind of separate the different routes that you explore. I'm assuming that was originally like a memory thing, like they couldn't like seamlessly just have you transitioning from one route to another, so they had to deliberately introduce these um, buildings that <clears throat> basically would serve as like um, uh, like a loading buffer. That's probably why they're there. They're kind of like, if you think of Pokemon trainers as buses, they're kind of like really beautiful bus stations. That was something uh, that I was really impressed with during my trip to Japan is just how unbelievably gorgeous the bus stations were the complete like i'm talking like cross-country like greyhound bus style bus stations um like the complete opposite of what you typically think of when you think of like a dingy smelly shitty like truck stop here in our lady of north america All right, here we go. Normally, I'd be a little bit apprehensive about taking on a, a gym with this much of a Cavalier attitude. Um, however, we are in possession of a pretty strong Water-type Pokémon, and we are battling a Pokémon uh, team that is pretty weak towards water, so let's go. Oh, you gotta respect Brock. The guy has a lot of honor in him. Ooh, level 12. That's two levels lower than my current Pokemon. I'm sorry, Geodude, but I think you're in trouble. Goodbye. Yay! Level 15. Yeah, that was actually literally the exact right amount of experience points to do that. Wow. Unfortunately, while Onyx's defenses are sky high, he actually does not have a great attack stat. So, unfortunately, there was not a whole lot that he could do against me. I took you for granted, and so I lost. As proof of your victory... I confer on you this, the official Pokemon League Boulder Badge. Because he received the Boulder Badge from Brock. Yeah. Just having the Boulder Badge makes your Pokemon more powerful. It also enables the use of the move Flash outside of battle, but not cut. That's something that always kind of mystified me the first time I played Pokemon. I was like going like hours and hours and hours in the game. Where is it that Cut's located? There are so many saplings that I want to cut down. I need to gain access to Cut. Not for a while, my friend. And here we go, a new addition to this game. Uh, I want to say that it is Rock Tomb. Which is actually like a real good, real useful ass move to obtain from the one and only Brock. It's the same uh, TM that you can obtain from Roxanne uh, in the Gen 3 games, but I don't really mind it all that much. It's a good like starting out move in these games, to be honest. All right, and with that established, I think we're ready to do our first save of the run. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been an interesting first episode whoop i almost dropped my controller on the floor that would have been quite the splatter uh, this has been an interesting first run for my um uh pokemon leaf green uh critical lock i am looking forward to everything that this critical lock has to offer to me even knowing that it could get quite out of hand <laughs> reflecting back on what happened in that first boss battle that we had with our rival but I'm here for it. 
and I hope that you guys are too. Thank you for tuning into tonight's stream. Remember, as always, that you can catch these streams live on Twitch every Monday and Thursday at 8 30 p.m. EST. I remembered it correctly this time. Uh, and as VODs on YouTube every Wednesday and Saturday at 3 p.m. EST. And of course, you can also find me on Twitter at Alex Kazina, A L E X K O Z I N A, uh, if the tweets and the twats are more your speed. Till next time, I'm Alexander Kazina, aka Cozy Bear, and I hope that you have a good day and a good night.